I continued to experiment with this piano and was very conscious of the fact that a good soundboard has to have low density material uh, and yet uh, something of fairly high uh, coefficient of elasticity, I think is the best thing to call it. And um, so I looked at various materials and uh, the obvious one that stood out was carbon fibre. Now this then got a bit expensive, of course, because carbon fibre is the sort of thing that's used for Formula One cars and uh, military aircraft. But I had tools made so I could manufacture sound boards for any size of piano up to imperial size. And the early boards that I made were something like two and a half, three millimetres thick. The sound was rather harsh. So progressively I made these thinner and thinner and uh, tried introducing a wood veneer on either side. To mod My idea was to moderate the sound, but it didn't actually do very much. And um, eventually I got down to a board that was only one millimetre thick. The performance was really quite exciting, but it was a bit like a sheet of canvas or drum skin and this obviously pushed things too far and so uh, we retracted a little and now we make these sound boards about one and a quarter millimeters thick. It is not immediately obvious to any pianist whether he's playing a board, a piano with a wooden board or a carbon fibre board. In fact, I've never had anyone uh, experimenting playing with these pianos. When playing uh, one with a carbon fibre board, no one has ever detected any difference at all. But once you tell them that they're playing a, a piano with a carbon fibre board, they will recognise that the sound is a little bit more immediate, which is nice, the rather more higher harmonics which one can moderate with the normal process of voicing, of softening the hammers, and uh, one gets a little bit more volume from the piano for a given input. The average vigorous concert pianist produces about a hundred watts of energy with its fingers at the keyboard. The average piano, good piano, produces about four watts of sound volume, from which the mathematicians tell me that uh, the efficiency of sound production of a traditional piano is just four percent. Now, we found with our pianos with carbon fibre soundboard and these what we call bridge agraphs, Phoenix bridge agraphs, um, that we could get that up to 8% efficiency. I don't think we've finished at all yet. When I get up to 20% efficiency, I should be prepared to retire and stop experimenting anymore, but that's the sort of target I've got in mind. As you increase this efficiency, the piano becomes so much easier to play accurately and they, they can be really nice. I've always been a, a bit um, concerned how copper wound bass strings lose their quality over a period of about 20 years, principally because the compression forces between the coils on the string uh, are lost with time. This is an, an engineering phenomenon known as metal creep. And when that uh, compression force is lost, then the string loses its best sound. And that's why you have to restring pianos. And of course they tarnish, 
um, the products of uh, oxidation get between the coils and that absorbs energy and that also spoils the sound. So recently in our Phoenix pianos we've been using either stainless steel or stainless copper material for the winding of the bass strings. Uh, it's certainly more durable. It gives a slightly greater clarity, but both of them are a little bit less in density than copper, and there is a, a very minor loss of power compared with a copper string. But um, I think the quality of sound it's, it's really a bit like the old iron strings that used to be used in the middle of the 19th century. It's, it's a better quality sound. And so our Phoenix pianos now have that as well. We've also made other changes to traditional pianos. For example, there's an American action which is made of composite material, much of it carbon fibre, which has very stiff hammer shanks. To me that gives a much better feedback to the keyboard of how the hammer is striking the string. A wooden shank is so flexible that when you play a note fortissimo the key has actually bottomed before the the hammer has left the, sh the rest at all. The shank is so flexible. I find that um, not conducive to getting the best control, whereas with a carbon fibre shank, it's, although it's hollow, it is significantly stiffer and you get a better feedback at the keyboard of what's going on in the action. Now, of course, it's different. Um, you may find that some professional artists say, well, I prefer the wooden shank, it may be flexible, but uh, uh, you actually lose energy when the uh, shank bends. So uh, we decided to introduce this carbon fibre based action, which is called the WNG, Vessel, Nickel and Gross. It has one or several merits. One of the merits is that it doesn't have any felt built into it. And as a, a rather crude experiment, we submerged an action in a bowl of water for 12 hours. And then the following morning, I pulled it out, blew it dry with a, a, a brief blast from an air gun, put it back in the piano, and it played utterly perfectly. In other words, it is totally immune to humidity. So if you've got a piano on a Caribbean island, uh, you better have a, a carbon fibre action. Some people have asked, why do you call it Phoenix? Well, it so happens that uh, I'm blessed with a rather long history of my family. And way back in Norman times, the family had a coat of arms, which was a Phoenix. And it seemed to me that since my Bersendorfer Imperial was really resurrected from the ashes of its accident, that um, I should call the, the resulting pianos Phoenix.